I mean, women were, as in the larger society, sort of insignificant. I mean, we weren't valued. Um, women didn't really hold any prominent roles in higher education. Um, the, the issue for women, of course, was trying to move up, um, getting breaks, equal salary, um, because there was a professor here, Professor Phoebe LeBoy, who had worked on making salaries across the board for faculty and, and some staff. Um, we didn't hold positions, many women didn't hold positions in other places at high levels. They may have been secretaries or administrators and what have you. And there was very, very few for African-American faculty. I think I was very fortunate um, for some of the doors that got open for me that didn't get open for a lot of other African-American women at the time. Um, um, but I, the dean of the School of Social Work, which was Louis Shoemaker, sort of took me under her wing and she mentored me. So I had, and she was one of the few um, women in, in, in power. There was always trauma and violence on the campus against women. There was more violence and trauma against women than there was against men. Um, so, I mean, that was an issue, but there were no rules and regulations. There was no policy. I mean, that, that just didn't exist. And so a lot of what the Women's Center did was to be involved in the development of that. Well, we were in Houston Hall. It was, really, it was really good at the time because we had never had really space for the Women's Center. We had a room here and a room there, you know, in the beginning. But then we really had a space, and we were right on the main floor um, as, as the administrative office, and which was really nice. But we were growing so rapidly because so many women were coming, and we had so many groups, and, and they were really enthusiastic and only one training room and very little space for the for the women to sort of hang out in the women's center because we felt hanging out was really important that's how you women get to know each other is hanging out and talking and and feeling not feeling like they're the only ones in you know having the same kind of issue well the the guys used to sit out of course the the weekend started you know on thursday <laughs> Uh, and so Thursday nights and Fridays and sat, you know, they would sit out on the, where all the uh, frat houses were. Not all of them were bad, but most of them were. And they had a lot of alcohol that was shipped in. I mean, the trucks would come right on campus at that particular time and deliver the beer and all of that. Um, the, the frat house that we're in, uh, where the Women's Center is now, was one of by the time I got here, it was not so good. That was the one where they would drag the couches out on the lawn, sit on the lawn, and when they would, women would walk by, with, they would rank, rank them. I, um, being that I was a, also a trainer as well as a social worker, I um, got a job to do a program in, the, in that frat house. And I went to do the job in the frat house. And when I was standing up, the boys were all laying on the floor, stretching their legs open, and their girlfriends were all being very disrespectful. And they called me the N-word, and I walked out. And so when we moved in the Women's Center, it was, chaotic, it was poetic justice for me. And so what happened is because they had so many um, uh, infringements of bad behavior, they were not going to be able to come back on campus in that house. And they destroyed the house inside. I mean, they knocked holes in the wall, they ripped out the toilets, they, they did lots of things that they shouldn't have done so. We negotiated, we organized women to, to, to talk about getting that house, to, to support getting that house, so that they would be placed for other women, and that we would be on Locust Walk because on Locust Walk was where all the trauma happened, you know, in terms of the, the drinking and the name calling and all of those kinds of things, really. That was this, it was the center of campus at that particular time. And so if we were on Locust Walk with the frats, then we could really fight. And so I would say to young women, you know, pay attention to yourself, be strong, be committed, don't let 
trivia things get in your way that's going to upset your education and your path of success. I think the Penn Women's Center is a safe haven for women in, in all aspects of their life because many young women come to school and they haven't learned to even be women, much less to be leaders or to be um, protagonists for other women. But I think it can be that, that, that space that is safe. It can be that space that they won't be judged. It can be and should be the space that we do things differently than men do them and that we are, should be proud that we do things differently than men do it and that we do it good.